Hello, my name is Billy McDaniel, and today I'm going to be making a, I guess a tile, a piece of a modular map. Uh, here, let me just show you. My friend Craig sent me this image, and he wanted to know what I thought of this and some suggestions on how I can make this look better. So I thought I'd make this little video to help Craig and anybody else who's interested in this sort of style. I'm going to try to make the same kind of thing that Craig's attempted to do here, but I'm going to make it look a little bit nicer. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So the idea is that this is supposed to be modular, and I would imagine that he wants to take this piece and make modular pieces to connect next to it. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but if you guys like what you see and you want to see more of this kind of stuff, just ask me. Just leave comments in the, in the comment sections down below. And don't forget to like and all that happy stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and created a cube. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is subdivide this. And don't worry about it. We're going to add lots of subdivisions, but we're going to reduce the subdivisions before we're all done. We're going to use the subdivisions to make this easier to turn this into a flagstone type of, uh, you know, configuration. So control, let's see, control E will bring up the edges menu and subdivide. And then we'll open up this little panel over here. And I'm going to change this to 10 cuts. So we have, you know, a pretty good amount of subdivisions to work with. I don't want it too many because I don't want to spend all day working on this, but if you wanted to have even finer detail, you could change the number of cuts to change the resolution of this. So let's go ahead and minimize that. I'm going to focus on one side right now and using the face selection tool, this tool right here, and also box selection, which is kind of important. So if that's not already on box, put it on select box and we're just going to select pieces they don't have to be square they don't have to be rectangle they need to be sort of a mix between square rectangles and l shapes maybe one t shape if any so something like uh something like this maybe and then we're going to hit x to delete but we're not going to delete anything we're going to dissolve those faces and we, what we want to do is we want to create some kind of flagstone texture here so and you want to, as often as you can, cut these shapes in half. So like this is one shape right here, and I'm cutting it in half right there. So I'm taking all of this and dissolving those faces. Same thing over here. We're cutting that in half over here, dissolving those faces. We'll take all of this. So we're cutting this. We're cutting that. Dissolve faces. We'll bring this out like this. So we're cutting this in half. And I guess we're not cutting this. We could if we want to. We can make something like this. Maybe you, that's even better. So we'll try that. And you can kind of have fun doing this. This is meant to be, um, you know, this is where you get to be artistic, I guess. So we'll do something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you don't have to cut every single time you do this. You can... Uh, sort of, you know, improvise. Here, let me just get through this and we'll, <laughs> and then we'll talk some more. Okay, so now that we've got this puzzle put together, guess what? We've got all these other sides to do, but uh, we don't have to do the bottom at least. So, Control 7. And I'll select just the tiles on the bottom and delete them. Now I'm going to go in high speed through this and we'll do all of the ones on each of the other sides. So here goes. Okay, we'll get the top to do. Remember, the top had some grass on it. We probably don't want to touch 
uh, at least this much of it. So what I can do is dissolve that and make that grass. But we want to go and focus on all these pieces here. Because ultimately it would be nice if we could make this look like it was one block right here. You see like this whole piece right here is like one block. So we'll dissolve those. We still want to stagger things over here as well. So it looks like that might end up being a piece of grass right there. Let's do that one a little bit different. Okay, so all of this is going to be grass and the rest is going to be stone. So now that I have the grass selected, I'm not sure if I should do this all at once or not, but the idea is to select all the stone. So since the grass is selected, I'm going to hit Control I to inverse selection. And we're going to use the I for inset. Make sure that everything is done here. So again, we don't have the grass selected, only the stone pieces. I. And if it doesn't, if it acts like this, then hit I again, and it'll do individual. Uh, it'll turn individual on. And we want to set this pretty small amount. It doesn't need to be that big. So probably something like point, at least on my screen, 0 0.01. So 0 0.01. If it doesn't seem right, then you can always undo and try it again. But ultimately, I want just a little bit here so there's a margin in between all of our blocks. Now this is a little bit painstaking, but I've got to go and do one side at a time. Or actually, maybe now that I think of it, we could do individual origins on this. So we can just choose individual origins. And we'll change this to normal. It's going to allow it to move it along the normals. And then when we hit um, grab and then move it along the Z axis, it'll move it along all of their normals at the same time. Because there's so many of them, it's really sensitive. But again, find a number. You can see the number up here in the left hand corner. So maybe 0.01 and then lock it in like that. So now I've moved all those rocks out on their normals. Let's remember to put this back because that can be a little frustrating if you forget about that. And let's take a look at this in object mode. So this is the first step right here. All right. So now <laughs> we're going to subdivide this whole thing. Now the poly count is going to get really high. Right now we're at 2634 tries. In a moment you're going to see the poly count go through the roof, but that's okay. We're going to decimate it after. So Turn your modifiers tab on. That's this one with a wrench right over here. And go to um, subdivision surface. As soon as you do that, you'll see things get really rounded. Just nice look already. If you want to make this look even more interesting, up the viewport by one. You can see it gets even more rounded. You're adding more geometry every time you do this. So if you wanted something to look picture perfect, um, you could do something like this, but look at the try count already is almost 150,000. I'm going to bring it down to two. That brings it down to 37, tri uh, 37,000 triangles. And it looks pretty good like this. And you'd be tempted to just throw this into your game, but that's, that's a pretty high try count for like one block. So what we want to do is add another modifier here to decimate that. That's going to bring the number down. So it won't do anything by default. You'll see that the number is still 37,264 tries. We're going to change the ratio by about 10%, so 0.1. And that still looks very similar to what it looked like before, but it knocked the percentage down to 10%. So it's 3,726 instead of you know 37,000. And if you want to get it even lower, of course, you can drop the ratio down lower. So maybe 0 0.05 instead of 0.1. And already you can see we're down below 2,000 tries. It still looks fantastic, especially for a low poly game. And I think I might actually go with this. So there's my final look right there. Now let's go ahead and apply them from top to bottom. So we'll apply the uh, subdivision surface modifier. And then we'll go ahead and apply the decimation modifier. And now we have something that looks much better. And we'll take a look at the before and after. So we have this. 
and that. It's almost like a, a completely different game if you think about it. But this could be overkill. Like if this isn't the look that you're going for, you you got steps along the way that you can change things. So, you know, you get to decide how rounded you want that to look based on the usage of these tools. And there's a lot of things that you can do with these couple of simple little tools. And you got to admit that this does look a lot better than that. So that's that's the lesson for the day. Again, if you wanted to make this modular, that would be a different video. If you guys want to see something like that, be sure to leave some comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. And that's it for today. Thanks, Craig. As always, uh, oh, by the way, Craig is one of my Patreon supporters. That's another thing you can do if you'd like to help out is support me on Patreon. And every once in a while, Craig uh, will say something in chat like... Um, you know, that would be a good YouTube video, and it's a good reminder for me to make more of these videos. So all I really need is, is a little boost once in a while. People say, hey, that would be a good video. You know, come and watch me on my Twitch channel and uh, hang out. And if you see something that would be a good video lesson for YouTube, I'll spend, you know, 10 or 20 minutes recording it and then add content to the YouTube channel. Or, like I said before, just leave a comment. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.